Yeah, we've Ryan McGivern has done a bit of training this morning, so we're hopeful Ryan will come back into the squad. Uh, James McPaik and Tim Clancy are still struggling a little bit, so they won't be available tomorrow evening. Uh, what's the extent of, of the of the injuries that Clancy and McPaik have both suffered? Yeah, they're not they're not uh, they're not anything really bad. They've got a uh, Tim has a little bit of um, swelling and inflammation and in, in a muscle in around his abductor and. Uh, James has sort of a muscle spasm in, in his lower back going into his glutes, so um, they need a little bit of a break at the moment and, and, and just hopefully that the both of them ease out, you know, and try getting them back into training before the weekend if we can. Uh, how, how do you go on from a sensational late derby win uh, and go on and try, and try and get the best out of the team just a few days later after what must have been a draining match for the players? Yeah, there is. Uh, you know, there's no doubt the time that Derby games are, are difficult in that regard, but we've got to maintain the focus now. We've got to finish. We want to finish seven. That's that's the key. If we can win our two games, we can do that. You know. So the key is to make sure that we, we go to Rugby Park and, and give a performance that we can try to pick up the three points. There's also an incentive there for players that may come into the team uh, tomorrow to, to get themselves into the squad for the cup final. So you know we shouldn't lose our focus on any of that. You know we we said at the at the start that we wanted to be in the top six. That hasn't happened. We've got to try to be next best then if we can. And finish the season strongly. Yeah, I obviously Jordan Forster came in, and we had Alex Harris playing, and of course uh, Ross Caldwell scoring the winner. How pleasing is it for you to see that the young players can step up and play in what is kind of a pressurised environment such as Tyne Castle? Yeah, it's fantastic because, like you say, you bring young players into the team, and Alex has probably played more than 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 the rest of them. But he's obviously showed a consistency as well for such a young lad. Um, you know, his performance had been very, very good. I thought, I thought the weekend as was his best performance for us. To be honest, you know, the semi-final thought he was fantastic, but I thought his overall game for for at Tyne Castle he was very, very good. Um, but it's that consistency. You know, Jordan's come into the team, Ross come into the team. Now they need to show that they can do that on a on a on a level, on a regular level. You know, and that's really important for young players that they kick on once they get into the team is maintaining and staying in there. Of course, uh, Kamark as well. They've got their own young players that, that are a bit dangerous. Uh, just how 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 do you how do you rate the the youngsters that that, that you've seen in Scottish football so far? Yeah, I think obviously Kilmarnock have introduced a fair few youngsters. They've they've lost a few players in the window, so they've had to bring in some young players, um, and they've done tremendously well for them. You know, so I think there's a lot of good players around the game. I think if you look over the the, the teams, you know, Hearts as well have introduced a lot of young lads this year into the team that have done quite well. You know, so there is, you know, Dundee United have brought in a fair few as well. So there is there is a lot of them coming through. They need to be given time, obviously, to develop and and to improve. But now there is some good young talent within the league. And uh, finally, uh, Griffiths obviously scored his 28th goal this season. I. Uh, Will he be getting played in any role at all on Wednesday or will he be rested for the weekend? We'll have to wait and see on that one.